Yo, what up? It's me, DC. Pardon me if you can't see me. There is no electricity. My light and again. Electricity has been going like crazy. So, pardon me if you cannot see me clearly or if the video does disrupt and my face flickers like it is doing right now. Alright, so I'm a bit late to this. So now, uh, this is the Ronaldo versus Ten Hag situation that happened at United a few years back. Everyone, including me at that time, supported Ronaldo in his decision to leave Man United or go against Ten Hag. Yeah, so like, no, Ronaldo was right, Ronaldo was right. But the thing is that after a few years and uh, following recent performances, I think we were a bit too harsh on Ten Hag. The fact that we fully supported Ronaldo without considering the coaching aspect. All right, so you always have to learn uh, to see things from both sides. You know, as Joanna Lucas once said, at least I'd get to know each other. But you know my story. You know, I, I know your story. I, you should at least hear mine or something like that. So let's take it from Ronaldo's perspective. He, he I think he was at 37 or 38 at the time when I was at United. And he was their leading goal scorer the previous season. Then when the new season began, let's not be, let's not lie to ourselves. He wasn't, you know, scoring or doing his thing. It happens. Every player goes through that period. So he believed. But what the thing is, Ronaldo is that he has that confidence. He'll continue trying and trying and trying. And then now comes this new manager, who immediately he comes by, he stops giving Ronaldo the minutes that he usually used to get. He'd usually play a full game, without being worried about, without being worried of being subbed off. To play a full game, he would enjoy. And yeah. That was Ronaldo's perspective. So he believed that he was supposed to be starting every game despite his age, benching Rashford and all those other guys. Yes, he had some points. But now, let's switch it up to the coach's perspective. All right, so in Ten Hag's mind, my, my best striker is a 37-year-old. Yes, it's surprising because at the end of the day, at any point, this man could retire or get a, or get a career-ending injury. And also that... He's 37. He's not supposed to be playing full games. Yes, he can do it, but it's not advisable for any coach to be overplaying like an older player because there's a tendency of them to get injured or just um, fatigue hits them soon. So he was trying to fix that by starting Ronaldo in the second half. But I do believe he was a bit too harsh on Ronaldo on making him enter the match in the 90 plus minute, 85th. Put the man on in the 70th and 60th minute. I think that would have been better for both parties, but that was his way. And he also had a temperament problem or there was a, I don't know, level problem because we all know Ronaldo is a five-time Champions League winner and Ten Hag does not have as many trophies as Ronaldo. And we all know that Ronaldo, the public figure he is, demands respect. And uh, yes, there is supposed to be mutual respect between the coach and the player, but the coach should always come first. So that's also another thing that came into factor. Another factor was you had a young talent like Rashford at that time who just who who was blossoming, let's not lie. He was blossoming, Alejandro Gonacho, all those other guys. Like, yes, you would give Ronaldo the chance to play, but when because if Ronaldo was still playing, we would not have gotten Garnacho. And Ronaldo, maybe he had five years, maybe at Man United, he could whoever he would play at the highest level, but Garnacho, at that age that he was, how many years do you think Garnacho would have? So for him that was a longer time period of a good player he would have. And I think he went a bit too harsh in the way he treated Ronaldo in making him train with the C with the reserve team. That was something I feel he did not need to do. But he did what he thought was right in the way he wanted to discipline him. And as a coach, and as from the coaching perspective, he did what he thought was right. And in which I can respect that he followed through with his, with his punishment on Ronaldo. Otherwise, I think this was a big issue of two egos, but... At the end of the day, you could try and see Ten Hag's point because, yes, he wasn't really performing. Yes, with a few games, you could have started performing like the Ronaldo we knew. But without him going, wouldn't have talents like uh, Alejandro Ganacho. Yes, I know he's new. He might not be as good as you think he is. But because Ronaldo left, it created space for other players to play. And I think Ten Hag is a player, he's a, sorry, he's a coach that prefers to have a manageable team. By manageable team, he prefers to have people that he can control. That's why he preferred to keep Varane and Casemiro both from Real Madrid, but I think they were much more, they were much more, they were more willing to give a listening ear to Ten Hag and listen to whatever he says. Um, you know, Ronaldo, he did try, but I don't think that worked out for him. That statement, he, that interview he did, I still agree with him. I mean, maybe if he didn't do that, United wouldn't be in the position it is right now. Otherwise, that's just a little rant between the Ten Hag versus Ronaldo situation. 
In a way, I think both of them are right. It's just that the media will try and make one party seem worse than the other. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.